Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. Today's topic, you may be wondering what has to do with real estate. And so I'm gonna tell you a little backstory. I have a friend who is also a client of mine who is moving into this market in a couple of months. And as we started to launch this channel, I asked him, I said, hey Rob, what are some videos that you would like to see that are showcasing different areas of our local market and the area that you're moving into? And one of the things at the top of his list was childcare. And so immediately the light bulbs went on for me, which was really a confirmation of something I was already thinking about doing because my son is part of the program that we are visiting today. And we've been extremely blessed by this program. He loves the program. And I think that it will be or could be a blessing to a lot of you that are either already living in this market or that could be looking to move into the Florence area. And so today I'm joined by the lead pastor at Pisgah Methodist Church on Ebenezer Road here in Florence, Josh McClendon. He's also known as Reverend Josh around campus. And so they offer a child care program called the Pisgah Pack. And today Reverend Josh is going to introduce himself and tell us about the program. And so with that being said and no further ado, thank you Reverend Josh for having us and letting us tour the place and look at the program. And so why don't you introduce yourself first and tell us a little bit about your background and who you are. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Sammy. So my name is Reverend Josh McClendon. Um, I've been an ordained minister in the Methodist Church for about 15 years. We've been here in Florence for about five and a half years and just have loved Pisgah. And uh, have a lot of different experiences in different towns in South Carolina and large cities, small town, uh, large churches, smaller churches, um, and across the board, some of our experience with after school care, with child care has been just totally positive. Um, we've loved being involved with that. We have three children of our own, um, a middle schooler and two who are still in elementary school and two who are actually here in our program in the pack um, with, with your son. And uh, they've loved it. We wanted to offer that not just selfishly for our own need, um, but we think it's a really widespread need in our world um, and increasingly so as more and more households are dual income, uh, as more and more uh, mom and dad are looking for you know, not just uh, to leave the kids at home or with, with who knows who, but really looking for, for licensed and vetted childcare. And so uh, right away, uh, really from the time I arrived here in Florence, started to talk to church leaders about what we were doing in that realm. Um, part of that for us here at Pisgah is that this northwestern edge of Florence County has really seen a lot of residential growth. Uh, mm -hmm. What was recently, or even still is, rural family-owned farmland and large parcel farmland um, has been increasingly sold, as happened, and subdivided, and uh, we see residential development all around us. And so we know we have that benefit as far as our mission field as a church. There is growth. People are moving to our area, whether to retire, uh, relocate for work. Um, lots of small towns in the PD have been feeding Florence, and a whole lot of that's happening here in our western side of Florence. Uh, with Lucy T. Uh, Davis Elementary just built a few years ago with Moore, the new Moore Middle School uh, built just a few years ago. We kind of said, how can we serve our people? How can we serve the people right around us? And so again, right away, just kind of popped. Um, we can do more to provide for families with childcare. There are lots of ways we can do that, um, lots of ways that churches do that. And in my experience, churches are still the most popular source of this kind of care in most communities. Again, every town, city, state that I've lived in, if there's the most well-known, most credible, most trusted child care in town, it's attached to some Christian group, uh, which I appreciate because it's like the forefront of the gospel. It's the forefront of who we're called to be, to serve people around us, uh, Christian or not, um, to serve children especially. Um, I think Christian people, our faith has been a big trailblazer towards the care of children forever mm -hmm. uh, and still in our world you know even folks that are not necessarily Christian people or not necessarily religious at all um, which is probably increasingly true as Americans um, they still generally trust the church and plenty of times we know there are church scandals and there are church issues just like anywhere people gather there are issues but um, still if there's a flagship program in most towns or several it is almost always the one that so-and-so Baptist, Methodist, Catholic Church, you name it, and, and that's where it's going well. And so we saw that happening here, and we have some sister churches we spoke to who were involved in child care ministry, and they really just encouraged us. They said, hey, our, our waiting lists are long. And that was my experience uh, moving here from Columbia. You know, we first tried to find child care for our children in Columbia, and it was 
uh, an immediate 18 to 24 month wait to get any kind of care. And it's not quite as bad here, uh, but still pretty critical. And so even what you could say might be, consider themselves competing programs, which they're not, uh, but you know, offering the same service, they said, hey, please open, because when our waiting list is just that long and we have to turn folks away, we would love to turn them towards you. And so we're really poised here, our location, um, we're in a, a nice little spot here, um, really almost unto ourselves on the northwestern edge of Florence County, and, and especially related to our two schools that we serve, uh, with Lucy T. You know, Lucy T. Davis is probably a mile, literally one mile away. Mm -hmm. um, Carver Elementary is probably three and a half miles away on, on this side. Uh, and those are our two primary schools to serve right now. So. Yeah, and I just want to say that all of that's, you know, we're an example of the accuracy of that process of thought because we live in one of the subdivisions in this part of town. Yes. And we ran into all of these problems. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, when my wife and I, you know, we're um, a young couple that are trying to get established mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. We have multiple children, and so child care becomes a big issue of figuring out how all those parts can move. And there are a lot of concerns you can have when it comes to child care. So finding adequate child care that was affordable and that yep. made sense. And the Pisca Pack offered a lot of those, it checked a lot of those boxes for us. Sure. And it's been a great experience. And so we're really appreciative. And that, like I said, that tells me that the train of thought that you had was accurate in identifying a very real need. We hope so. We've you know, obviously prayed about it. We want it to be a ministry of the church and have the congregation own it and, and embrace our families and those we serve. Um, and I think that's gone really well. You know, we're still a new program, but just so far, as far as my hopes for how it would go and for the excellence of care, it's just met every expectation. Uh, if there's anything for us to grow into is that we just, we have space for more kids. Um, you know, when you have quote unquote a product that you are proud of, and we are, really all that you lack is a wider audience. You just want to share it more. And that's where we are today. I'm um, just trying to get the word out, uh, engage more families, and we've got a lot of room to do that. Um, you, know, you touched on the three sort of categories that we've heard from every parent we engage in that we know as parents to. You know, folks want to know about cost and quality and convenience. Um, naturally, not necessarily in that order. Um, naturally, cost matters because, oh my goodness, the cost of child care can range from reasonable to mind-blowing right I mean it is <laughs> crazy and multiple children and yeah you're just thinking through how much you're spending on several kids in, in care and so right away as a newer program too we wanted to begin um, to be able to recruit folks and say hey we're we're gonna offer really top quality but at a really low price mm -hmm. um, so for instance this fall I think we'll open it uh, and for after-school care this fall we will be at $65 per week and that is on par with the least expensive programs in our area. Um, public school actually offers in-house after-school care, and I think we'll be almost equivalent to them in price, even though I, I do think we offer quality that really outshines a lot of, a lot of programs. Um, per quality, you know, the best guarantee for good quality in our experience is obviously really good staff, uh, really good staff to student ratio um, a part of what makes a program feel like it's survival, you know, you're throwing your kid to the wolves is, you know, if you have 200 kids in a, in a cafeteria gymnasium and two adults, right. you know, <laughs> who are really just on their phone, um, it's the Wild West. And kids can thrive, they can do their homework if, if they're self-starters, um, but it's still just, you know, that large group survival mode. And so um, our, our core commitment is keeping our student-teacher ratio between 10 and 15 to 1. Um, keep it as small as possible. And then our director, uh, Laura Rivers, is just an excellent, really well-qualified uh, director. She's been a public school teacher for, I think, between 30, 35 years. Um, spent most of that time here at Moore for the last, I think, 20 plus. It's a really experienced, um, taught high-level English students. Um, is a, a really a, a firm part of this community. They've, she and her husband have been really active members here at Pisgah for many years. and so. We know that she's got an awesome faith background. Uh, her dad's actually a Methodist preacher too. Uh, she's got great faith instruction, great knowledge, uh, been a Sunday school teacher and just involved in all kinds of ways. Um, her own two children are recently young adults. Uh, both uh, went, to, went through school here, went to West Florence, both went to Clemson and are out in the world now. 
Um, one is working in business, the other is working in uh, church ministry. And so just awesome family who have lifelong ties to this area, who have seen all these things too, childcare, after school, uh, elementary, middle school, high school, how does it all work together? Um, and recently, you know, both of these, both of their kids are in their 20s. And so um, just she's an ideal person. Uh, when it worked out for us to hire her, we were incredibly pleased. She's just, again, like you said, checks every box, you know, organized, um, great, socially strong, great at relationship building, um, just a really good leader. And she's great at communication, too. She's been really great in communicating with us. So Awesome. awesome. Yeah, she was our introduction to the program, actually, was yeah. Laura. So. So this is a year-round program, so why don't you give us a general overview of the program during the school year and during the summertime? Yeah, so those are our two sessions. Uh, the after-school session, when school is in, uh, is really Monday through Friday, typically from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, so our uh, Pisgah Pack bus will pick up from uh, nearby elementary schools um, right around 2, 2.15, and then have them back here. Now, parents may pick up obviously at any time once they've arrived and some do pick them up pretty early um, others they can stay all the way till six o'clock and so that's considered uh, part-time aftercare uh, but we are open for full day care anytime parents need it if there's a, a teacher work day if there's a half day we will be open for the duration uh, for intercession weeks uh, we're open full day so i believe around 7 30 a.m till 6 p.m uh, parents drop off and, and pick up for those full days. Uh, but it's part of what um, we set out to do to provide year-round care. And we don't charge extra for those weeks. It's still just the normal after-school rate. Um, we kind of recoup that you know, throughout the course of the year in other ways. And so it's just something we want to provide so that you know, we know if there's working families, if that's a part of why folks want or need the child care, uh, they need that even when there's a teacher work day. Uh, summer session is a little different. Um, it's a little more costly. Uh, the after-school sessions are going to be $65 per week. Uh, summer sessions $125 per week, naturally because it's a commitment to full-day daycare. Uh, but in the summertime, we will be open for three three-week sessions. And again, that's really all day long. I believe 7.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. And so Monday through Friday, all three weeks. Um, you can sign up for one session or all three and have the whole summer covered. Okay, yeah, that's great. And so what age group is this program for? So for our relationship with DSS, we uh, can provide care for 5K, so kindergartners through fifth graders. Okay, and so you mentioned DSS. Can you tell us a little bit about just any accreditation or credentials? Because a lot of people like myself don't know how all this works, but just the legitimacy of the program, you know, according to the state and sure. any of those elements. Yeah, that was what was new to us as well, starting this from scratch. And we learned a lot for, we really did about a two year uh, season of study before we got into this. Uh, with DSS, Department of Social Services here in South Carolina, uh, we're considered a part-time exempt program. What that means is that since we're open for just those four hours a day during after school sessions and only open for full days when absolutely necessary, when schools are closed, um, that we're quote unquote part-time for their needs, um, which means we're also exempt from a whole lot of deeper regulation than say a daycare that involves infants, uh, you know, more critical needs and stuff. And so uh, minimal amount of involvement from DSS, but we did, um, you have to run through their checklists and get everything in order to be, to be right with them and fire code and those sorts of things. And so um, we just navigated that prior to opening and it's gone, gone really well. Okay, great. So I know that Ms. Laura is going to tour us around the campus today and we're going to take a look at all the different offerings. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And again, this is Reverend Josh McClendon at Pisgah Methodist on Ebenezer Road. As always, the contact information for the church or just specifically for the program will be down in the description of this video. And we are about to transition over and take a look around and see the program in action so that you can get a look at it. So thank you, Reverend Josh. We appreciate it and we're excited to go take a look around. My pleasure, man. Okay, so I'm joined by Ms. Laura Rivers. She is the director of the Pisca PAC, and she has over 30 years of experience in the public school system predominantly, some in private school. And she is about to be our tour guide to take us around the facility and to show us what one day in the after school care looks like. So Ms. Laura, we're gonna follow your lead. Okay, this is our Family Life Center. This is where the children come in in the afternoons and they have snacks. We try to provide a semi-healthy-ish snack. We don't do 
sugar and lots of chocolate and candies. Uh, we do provide uh, crackers, fruits, Cheez-It type things, Rice Krispie treats. They enjoy talking with each other about their school day. And then we also have our Bible time here. We use um, a Bible storybook and we talk about the different people from the Old and New Testament. On Thursdays, Reverend Josh provides chapel time. Sometimes he'll do chapel in here with the boys and girls, and sometimes we do it outside or we go to the sanctuary. So Ms. Laura's gonna take us to the outside area where on a normal day, they would go outside and have a playtime. However, today it was raining cats and dogs earlier in the day. And so the sun's out a little bit now, they did their playtime inside. But however, this is the area, the outside area here. We do a lot of just free play. You'll notice we don't have playground equipment, swings and slides, but we do have nine square in the air. Around the scout hut on the backside, we have gaga pit, gaga ball pit. Um, we've got lots of hula hoops and balls, frisbees, jump ropes, things like that. We also have lots of games that are favorites. So due to the fact that it rained cats and dogs outside today, they actually had their playtime inside, but on a normal nice day, they will be able to play outside in the backyard area there. And I know Dakota always has a really good time with that. This is our craft and playroom. The boys and girls enjoy playing different board games. They enjoy inventing games on their own. We do arts and crafts in here. We've got a whole lot of books and puzzles and Legos and blocks doll houses and things like that that the boys and girls like to play either individually or in groups or pairs. This is our homework room. This is where the boys and girls come to work on any homework assignments that are given to them so they have time here to get things done before they get home Make words we know. to allow time for family activities any kind of sports or dance activities they usually have about 45 40 to 45 minutes working in the homework room um, kindergarten through second grade is in here right now they're working on their assignments with their teacher and the third through fifth graders then take a turn as well. Okay, so I know that the first time that I came, I picked up on the emphasis of security. So can you tell us about some of the measures that you guys have taken as far as security goes? Sure, I'm glad to. Um, we know that safety is a very important issue to parents and to us as a church. Um, we have installed a brand new security system all around the church. I think we have 33 or so cameras all around the church that we have access to all the time. Um, there's one here that shows the drive-in, drive-pull-up lane where parents pick up the carpool line. Um, and then we have other cameras throughout the building that show other views of the, of the different parts of the building. I know that when I come to pick up Dakota, I pull up outside and I call you and you all bring him out to me. So all the doors in the facility are locked and you can see that it is in fact me that is pulled up through this monitor right here, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Um, thank you for pointing that out. We are able to answer the phone. In fact, we have found that that's the best way for the parents to reach us in the afternoon. Um, that way I can be all around the building, being an extra set of eyes and ears on everything, and the parents are picking up and calling me, and that way I can walk them out and greet the parent and say hello, and this camera does allow us to know who is at the door, yes. We also have cameras outside and all around the building on the outside, so we know who's coming and going on the outside. 
Our staff is all CPR trained. They have that training. We also have Safe Sanctuaries training, which in the Methodist Church is a safety program for adults and children. Um, our children are not ever just one teacher, one adult. We always have at least two teachers with one child um, when the numbers get smaller. So that's all really good information. I know that's something that I appreciated a lot. And so I know that at our church, we have to run background checks for everybody that's involved with any minors. So do you guys do full background checks for your staff? Yes, we certainly do. Full background checks as, long, as well as the other training that I mentioned, safe sanctuaries and um, CPR training and other things just to make sure everybody's safe and everything's above board. So I know that the bus picks up from a couple of different schools. So can you just tell us where the transportation is provided and then just go over the schedule of the program and the rates for us one more time? Sure, I'll be glad to. Right now our program picks up from Lucy T. Davis Elementary School and Carver Elementary Schools. Um, our rates right now are running um, $65 a week with a $50 registration fee per child. And then during the summer, we'll be open from 7.30 until 6, and that rate is $125 a week and a $50 registration fee per child. We provide two snacks on full days and then one snack on the regular after school days. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Laura. I appreciate you touring us around. Thank you for coming. All right, All right so this is Dakota. So Dakota, I want you to tell me, do you enjoy being part of the Pisca Pack after school and what do you like the most about it? So I, I really do like being a part of PAC. It's a really fun place to be. People are nice and there's a lot of friends that you can make and all the people are nice. It's a very good place to learn and there's a lot of help around you. Great. So again, this is the Pisca PAC. It's Mount Pisca Church on Ebenezer Road. Their phone number, as you can see, is there, but I will put all their information down in the description. This is my son, Dakota, and I can honestly say that this program has been a blessing to our family, and we hope that it will be a blessing to yours. I think they're doing a really great job here. So with that being said, if you found this video valuable, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date of future information about real estate in the state of South Carolina and information about our local markets, such as this video. And in the meantime, y'all take care, and we'll see you soon.